And welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. We kickstart this morning by going through the major news stories, making headlines across Nigeria. And we're joined this morning by Chief Lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism, Jide Johnson. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. Thank God it's Friday. Yes, thank Hopefully, God it's Friday. Um, <laughs> the good Lord will brighten our day and will brighten our faces with a wonderful smile and light in our pocket with the resources we require to take good care of our family and ourselves. That, la that last you. one, absolutely important. <laughs> uh, let, let's start off this morning with stories from the Punch newspapers and see what we can also uh, uh, share with our viewers this morning. Uh, vaccination continues, says the federal government. Eight countries suspend rollout. I saw that yesterday. Uh, there seems to be a little controversy with regards to the AstraZeneca vaccine. Uh, it seems to be having uh, blood clotting um, complications. Uh, but the uh, Nigerian government says vaccination continues as eight countries suspend rollout. We haven't seen unusual reactions after administering uh, AstraZeneca vaccine, says the Nigerian government. Patient safety are highest priority. United Kingdom manufacturer insists. All right. Federal government rules out talks with bandits, opts for crackdown. And we can also find their YouTube to deduct taxes from Nigerian content creators and others. Federal government begins selection of 500,000 NPAR beneficiaries. Two, two killed. A police uh, OPC go after Oshun bank robbers. We can also see on the punch this morning, a man remanded for scamming U.S. state of $8,000 COVID-19 funds. Nigeria's rising debt servicing and economic threat, says the SEC. And also Malami Bawa summoned over forfeited assets transfer to AGF office. And uh, reps canvas high allocation, say National Assembly is broke. Uh, we could, let me also uh, add just one more story from the punch uh, this morning. NIPOST reclaims rights as federal government strips FIRS of stamp duty collection. All right, uh, Gideon Johnson, I think we should start with um, the uh, NPAR beneficiaries once again. It's back in the news. Uh, the, it's the federal government's um, approach uh, towards uh, getting more and more Nigerians out of unemployment. Um, and, of course, uh, putting some food on their table. So let, let's get your view on that, first of all, before we talk about vaccination. Well, any, any attempt to ensure that um, the citizenry, particularly the young generation and the vulnerable segment of the population uh, enjoy social benefit and are empowered through one scheme or the other, I think um, it's good for the society. So the empire, even though it's, it's a form of underemployment, but at least it's better than government not doing anything. So it, it's a welcome development. And I think we should look at ways to improve um, this program and also to increase the number of beneficiaries of from this uh, program from now but if you look at the local government structure that is used that's a thousand per each local government you discover that Lagos state for example that has more population than New York state is to change that has more population than Jigawa state is to change that has more population than Ocean state because on the basis of local government or your state has them, 33 local government, Ocean State has about 30, Jigawa State. So I think what should have been used for this will have been the federal con constituency and not um, local government. Federal constituency seems to represent the equitable distribution of the population across the nation. And I think we need to look into that and the National Assembly need to legislate on that. When things are done on the basis of local government, some states that are highly populated are a disadvantaged position because of the structure of the local government we have in Nigeria. Lagos it has 20 local government um, compared to Kanu that has 44, Jigawa that has over 33. I recall when Lagos, when Kanu and Kanu and Jigawa used to be one one state and Lagos state they had almost the same local government and the population of Lagos state combined was much more than that of Kanu and Jigawa. So it, uh, but, uh, um, just Outside so, of that, it's a welcome development. 
Okay, well, I'm, 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 I need to get confirmation if, you know, it's the same uh, way these uh, beneficiaries are selected with the 774,000 jobs um, that uh, Festus Kayamo uh, was in the news for, and of course, that the government also started. Um, but we, yeah, because fighting, I, with the, fighting with the legislature, the legislature, there was a disagreement between the National Assembly members. And yeah, but, but I, the, I think they are two the, different programs. So the NPAR um, is a different program from the Festus Kayamo um you know uh, oh, discussion yeah they are too sorry for sorry for the <laughs> yeah, sorry for the mix up concerning, yeah, concerning but let, that let, let's let's my head is now. locked up on that um, yeah i understand let, let's go now to talk about vaccines and the fear that um it seems to be creeping in with regards reaction to vaccines um, there are certain countries that have stopped using the astrazeneca vaccine because of reactions that they've seen uh, with people that have been given those jabs um, the Nigerian government says vaccination continues. We haven't seen any of those reactions here, and so we'll continue to use them. What's your reaction to that? Well, um, the, the rider to that story is that safety of Nigeria is of concern to federal government. Federal government said that, and we have not witnessed any reaction to the use of that drug, particularly in, in, in Nigeria. I think various agencies should monitor and ensure that in the life of people are not put at risk with respect to this particular vaccination. And for this vaccination uh, to have been tested and to have been approved by various bodies in United Kingdom, um, regulatory body in United Kingdom and United States of America, and most countries all over the world have ordered the vaccine, uh, the reactions. Definitely there will be people that will develop um, reactions to this. To this vaccine, the vaccine does not work the same way on, on on people, but government should just keep their hands on, on on the issue, pay attention to it, and the regulatory agents should monitor to ensure that um, we do we do not contribute more to the problem than solving the problem. So I don't think we should use the knee jack approach. The vaccine has gone through clinical trials, it has gone through various regulatory approval. We should just monitor and observe those that have been that have received the jab on their hand. To see if there are complications in in Nigeria, and if those complications are not, you shouldn't raise them eyebrow where it's not necessary. That's my All take right. concerning the, the of the vaccine. Okay. And then, if you look at the reactions, if you look at um, the postulations of people when coronavirus, when the pandemic first started, they said Africans would be dying on the street. That the PTOs, and but you see that it's a different ball game to the way we have reacted to coronavirus in terms of pandemic and with other parts of, of the world. So yeah. I, I, there's no need for us to, 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 be, to be troubled, but government should just keep their eyes on the ball, not All of right. the ball. Yeah, and and I'm, I'm guessing there's also a, you know, a little ex more work that needs to be done with uh, uh, public information and uh, orientating the public with regards vaccine uh, safety. Uh, because uh, once these stories start to fly across for, Nigeria... For for let, for, forget our public information management. Is uh, I, I, I don't know. We've spoken about that as when it comes to information management in the government. We don't know. The Honorable Minister of Information is quick to respond to critics and to respond to issues of, of no significance and issue of national importance. We don't even know who is the director of national orientation. The agency of government that is responsible for public enlightenment, public social mobilization, and the rest of it is a national orientation agency. I don't even know whether that agency is in existence. Um, as bit knowledgeable as I am, I don't even know who the director of that agency is. I don't even know who the state director of that agency is. Probably they couldn't receive funding. We don't even know whether they receive funding. So that agency is the agency that should be responsible. Because when it comes to the issue of vaccine, don't forget that there'll be a lot of information and there will be a lot of disinformation with respect to, and that's why you see globally, political leaders, presidents, prime ministers were the first set of people to receive this vaccine. And this vaccine were received publicly and to show, to pass a message across to, and in our own country too, the vice president and the, the president and the vice president received it, it was a national issue. So as to correct the misinformation and this information out there that this vaccine, if the president can take it, and the vice president can take it, and the governors can take it. It means that these vaccines are good. However, we need 
follow-up communication and information by agencies of government to educate people to alter negative perception and correct um, negative attitude towards this this vaccine is very very important and it's it's critical for us moving 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 forward. All right, let's move to another paper. Okay, the Nigerian Tribune now, and uh, the banner story here is about insecurity. It says insecurity. Buhari NSA talk tough. The writers here say we will be more ruthless with criminals. Anyone found with illegal AK-47 will be shot, President affirms. Traditional rulers at Villa lament toll of banditry on their subjects. FG not weak, won't negotiate with bandits. 2,403 insurgents killed since 2015, NSA. How Irunsi Gowon Obasanjo crippled traditional institution, laid foundation for national insecurity, and that's according to the Sultan. And PDKB governors here saying we're ready to support the federal government. And above the banner, CBN reopens portal for 50 billion Naira economic stimulus package. BDCs move against Forex speculators, black market dealers. 41.6 billion Naira basic education fund not assessed by states. That's according to the UBEC boss. How 2023 politics? Tempting high rates of dollars are encouraging drug trafficking. Inadequate funding, logistics constraining effective Amoteco operations in Southwest. And uh, below the fold, reps order EFCC to dispose seized forfeited properties. Niger Delta governors absent as Buhari inaugurates NDDC building. House of Reps is broke, spokesman. Another story is here, bandits kill seven in fresh attack in Kaduna. Ranching, fire me not ceding Ikiti lands to herdsmen, APC. Southwest leaders meet in the battle next week over insecurity. Gunmen kidnap two students, lecturer in Edo. Kidnapped father, son, pays three million naira to secure release. And Niger gov governor closes public schools for two weeks. Mr. Judy Johnson, insecurity is really big on the, the Nigerian Tribune today from people who were killed, kidnapped, paying money for ransom, and uh, President Buhari's stance on you know, non-payment of ransom and how they are promising to deal uh, decisively with criminals. We've heard these promises for too long. Don't you agree? Um, said talk is cheap action is important talk is cheap and um, Buhari NSC talked of um, remember when NSC visited I think one of the states in the north uh, and he asked the citizen to defend themselves against bandits and yes the NSC is singing a different tune that federal government will deal decisively with anyone carrying illegal if it was modified, Lega, AK-47. Who are those that are, uh, I don't think, who are those that are, have the legal permit to carry AK-47 in Nigeria? So talk is, talk is cheap. And if government cannot provide for the basic required for the survival of a citizen, there's no basis for that government. It's the safety of lives and property of a citizen in the pursuit of their happiness, and social good. All this, we have had too many talk concerning concerning dealing with this body too. And when you have rewarded criminality, when you have rehabilitated Boko Haram, um, you call them repentant, when governors of governors of northern states have had meetings, have had to pay people to hand over their AK-47. And governors have had meetings with bandits and it's reported there, there's no way you will not encourage that level of um, criminality involving the traditional rulers in the fight against bandit i think this is a step that is coming is as an important step but it's a step that is coming rather late this should have been this should have been earlier other than now and i think the traditional rulers should understand and that they are not only traditional rulers, but they represent a moral authority. 
the moral authority in which they can question or, or bring under their, if I'm a traditional ruler and within my environment, I have, we have our local intelligence. And I think government needs to work with various institutions, local, traditional institutions, for us to deal with this issue of banditry. And we don't need to pay, use key clothes to deal with this issue. If someone is arrested for banditry, I think there should be a special court so that the trial is quickened. And then we can deal with this issue, make examples of them. But if not a single bandit has been sent to jail, if not a single Boko Haram have been sent to jail, rather we have exchanged prisoners with them over the years, and we have even rehabilitated some, and we have given them money. You are sending a wrong signal. You are sending a wrong signal that criminality pays more than you, other than you obeying the law and being a law-abiding citizen. I said in an abnormal, in a normal situation where the norm is criminality, obeying the law is abnormal, and we have an abnormal situation in Nigeria that once you obey the law, you are the one that becomes a victim okay. in, 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 in our society. Mr. Johnson, I, I wanted you, you know, your opinion on this matter. The Sultan of Sokoto, uh, uh, Mohammed Saad Abubakar, has said that the military decrees that were made, you know, laid the foundation for insecurity in Nigeria. Does this agree The president is saying that too. He was part of the military. He was a, I think he was a colonel. He was a retired colonel. He's part of the institution. And I've, I've said it over time that in Nigeria, okay, the military made that mistake. We have had 20, almost 22 years of democratic experience. Can we change it? Can, can, can a 22-year-old you be complaining that, oh, you know what? The problem I'm having in life is because my grandfather, my grandfather, my father made a mistake in not doing this, in not doing this. I think a 22-year-old should learn to take responsibility for his life. If after 22 years of democratic experience, we are still complaining about the military, well, it means we are not prepared for the democracy we want to have inside. However, I have said it, that there's a structural problem which we have. That's why I keep talking about restructuring. We are unfortunate that we are in a democracy, but we are having a civilian administration. We are unfortunate to have the first president under this present democratic experience was a former head of state was a former head of state our military and citizen and the first time we have a transition from one party to another party the next president was also a former military head of state and no matter how hard it trains it can never wash away the black spot in a leopard then no matter how hard it is, someone that grew up in the military that has a military antecedent we always have that background if the Sultan, who happens to be a colonel before, had raised this issue when he was a junior officer in the military, probably this issue could have been resolved. So he's mm. just making excuses for present administration. And besides, a republic, I've said it, some of the problems we are having in Nigeria is as a result of not knowing what type of government we are practicing. A republic does not have traditional rulers. So if we want to have traditional rulers, we should assign constitutional rules to them. And we should not call Nigeria a federal republic. All right. Because in a republic, it is the constitution and it is the citizenry that the sovereignty lies with. But Nigeria is a contraption. We call ourselves a federal government, but we operate a unitary government. We call ourselves a republic, we have traditional institutions. All right. There's also stories of the, the National Assembly, uh, Assembly being broke. It also came up on the uh, Punch newspapers this morning. Uh, would you react to that before we move when, to our next paper? When the body that is charged with allocating funds, giving approval, the appropriation bill is the exclusive responsibility of the legislature. And they are coming to tell us that they are broke. What are they using? The money that has been allocated to them, what are they using it for? You see, they are preparing the ground for the jumbo budget they are going to allocate to themselves in 2022 financial cycle. That's what they are trying to do. Because how do you justify the resources that have been allocated to the National Assembly over buying exotic cars, uh, buying exotic cars, paying themselves humongous allowances? I have said it. 
you don't need luxury cars as of it's nigeria that whether public or elected officials use luxury cars as as official car why would you use Prado, for example Prado, as an official car why the cars you should use as official car should be functional car cheap cars if you see if you look at our budget the bulk of our budget the larger percentage of it go to recurrent expenditure why few percentage goes to capital capital expenditure so let them allocate all the resources of the nation to themselves it will get to a time it will get to a time people march to lekki people march to alausa it will get to a time nigerians will mark to the floor of the national assembly and demand a change it's just a matter of time it's just a matter of time okay. that people will walk straight to the to the to the secret chamber of the national assembly and demand that you know what there's a need for a change in this site and when that happens like it up when that happens um the legislature will quickly come around and might tag that to be insurrection and people might be arrested but a time will come Things can't continue for everybody in which right. we can't go let's on, move this, to the, on this on this on this on this journey. All right, Jide Johnson. Let's move to the uh, Daily Independent. Uh, there's something on the NDDC that I wanna I want us to speak about. Uh, the president, of course, inaugurated the NDDC building and it's making headlines across the country. But it says there, Niger Delta governor's absent as Buhari Commission 16 billion naira NDDC building. Uh, there's also been comments that uh, are praising the current administration for commissioning the building um, and, of course, are knocking the previous administration for not being able to finish that building. Um, gunmen kill seven in Kaduna, raise houses. Also, how's, uh, how gaps in 1999 constitution fester insecurity, says the Senate president. The big story there says we won't engage mercenaries against Boko Haram from the federal government. says negotiating with bandits will portray it as weak. And the president ins insists on shoot on site order for illegal bears of AK-47. Reps once again say, we are broke. We need increased allocation. Federal government and states have resources to pay minimum wage, says uh, Rewane. And Niger shot uh, secondary schools for two weeks over insecurity. We also can see the federal salary structure can't be imposed on states. All right, uh, Julia Johnson, I want us to start with the Niger Delta uh, story. It says Niger Delta governor's absent as Buhari commissions 16 billion Naira NDDC building. And I want your views on um, one of the statements that we, or the comments that we got from our guest yesterday, who said the reason, uh, his, you know, from his analysis, one of the reasons the NDDC and the Niger Delta in general isn't working is because the main people really in charge of the affairs and the funds, you know, with regards to Niger Delta, and of course we spoke about the host community fund and the controversy it started yesterday. Uh, governors of the South are asking for 10% host community fund instead of 2.5%. Um, and he, the, the guest we had yesterday was saying that the reason, you know, that those things don't work is because most of the people who run the shows in those, in those um, um, agencies are from elsewhere besides the Niger Delta. Do you think that is correct? And I'm also going to quickly mention uh, something that I yeah. saw. The Coalition for Good Governance and Rule of Law announced plans to lead a protest over alleged lopsided recruitment of, uh, by the Petroleum Equalization Fund Management Board. It says that over 200 persons, out of over 200 persons employed, only 17 were from oil-producing states. States like Borno have 13, Kano has 19, Katsina has 14. Edo State has zero, Delta has three, and um, Crossover has two. So th does that narrative work? Well, um, first, why should the headquarters of NDDC be in Abuja and not in Niger Delta? If NECO is cited in Niger State, which is a national examination body. If you have MBT still in Kaduna, another agency of government in the north, but in the south, every agency of government in the south is moved to Abuja. Why should end this in Abuja? And this should be cited either in Delta State, Paesa State, or, or River State. I think that's when the call for restructuring comes in. Then if you also look at 
the the technical support for this ministry which comes from the from the civil servant if you look at the structure of the civil servant of these agencies um, there is a disparity with respect to um people from niger delta with people from other other sections of of the country you we must if if you want to deal with the problem of equity if you want to increase involvement of people in the management of the affairs let them manage their resources although over years over the years some of the resources that have been allocated to the niger delta have not have been misused by various agencies on deck and the rest of them that have been created in the past both the right thing must be done i cannot imagine for example we have the northeast um if you have a, a program a project let's say dealing with deforestation in the northeast and you have such a situation and you're employing people from the south to add that agency to be in that commission i know the who's and cries that will come from that's why people keep clamoring for restructuring there must be a balance and if you want to solve people's problem by keep, by making them to be involved in the management of their affairs you don't employ others from other section of the country much more than they have the narrative is the narrative is true the narrative is real it's real it's, 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 it's clear and federal government needs to be more transparent be more open and be more um should involve people from that section of the country in the management of that affair so that they can hold themselves themselves account accountable with respect to to the niger delta i support the position of your guest that was around um, yesterday because what's the essence of federal character what's the essence of why was the ministry created in the first instance for what purpose the recruitment that has been done the staffing of those agencies are they in line with the objective of establishing that particular ministry? And I'm strongly of the opinion that that ministry, the headquarter, the 15 billion headquarter in Abuja, can the people in the Niger Delta assess that office? That office should be in Port Accord, should have been in bias. That's my view. And for the president to have gone ahead to inaugurate that ministry without any of the governors from the um, Niger Delta being present, is enough signal to tell you that. They are dissatisfied with what you are doing. If you are doing something for someone and the beneficiary is not satisfied, I think you need to sit down on the ramp and try to iron out things and solve the problem. And to a large extent, NDDC has been a drain pipe for other people and for people also from Niger Delta to drain the resources that is allocated to this region for their own private and personal personal use why why are we in 30 seconds why are we celebrating the launch of a building or the commissioning rather of a building why, why would you what what's the big i don't know you know it's in nigeria that you build a road and then you see them commissioning the road i don't see i've never seen the prime minister of Britain or the president of united states of america going to commission road, basic infrastructure, <coughs> commission building. That's an assignment for a president of the Federal, Federal Republic of Nigeria. And in most cases, we spend more money. If you look at the budget for the, for the commissioning and the grand opening, you'll be shocked that can't we use these resources for other things. But you know what? What do we know? Those people, right. they are technocrats and they know better than you and I, we are just journalists. Okay. Okay. On the Nation newspaper this morning, Italy, Norway, five others halt use of AstraZeneca vaccine. And Nigeria didn't get the dangerous batch. Bandits demand 200 million naira to free Niger 19. Seven killed in Kaduna. Man says banks delaying CBN's one trillion naira stimulus and House of Reps broke. Delta can't claim a bori linked 4.2 million pounds loot, says SANs. Nipus reclaims stamp duty collection from FIRS. NERTW dissolves on Duesco. Buhari explaining here why I gave order to shoot criminals with AK-47 rifles. Ubeck laments state's failure to assess 
41 billion naira fund. NLC can't negotiate on ASO's behalf. Two stories here I want us to um, talk about this morning, Mr. Um, J.D. Johnson. Naipos here has claimed the stamp duty uh, from FIRS. And we know that for over three years now, there's been dispute and controversy about who should rightfully collect the stamp duty uh, on behalf of the federal government. Uh, what do you think about this new development? Mr. Johnson. Yeah, um, if you look at um, the first headline, countries were identified. Italy, Spain, no way. If you look at when the pandemic first broke out, Italy and Spain were affected more than most countries at the initial stage because they have an aging population. They have an aging, they have an aging um, population. This could be a factor. I'm not a scientist, but this could be a factor why this country had issues with this vaccine for AstraZeneca. But it's important for us to pay attention, to get data and to look at the data. It's important. It's data that guides decision making when it comes to science. So we should get the data, we should look at the data, follow the data and make necessary adjustment where um, it is it is very 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 important for us to make that adjustment that's okay. on that on the on the on the vaccine the vaccines all right uh, mr mr johnson i was actually asking about this dispute between the firs and nipost that seems to be resolved on the front page of the nation reads nipost reclaims stamp duty collection from firs and uh, before we lost you there for a second, I was trying to explain that uh, and recall. It, oh, okay, go ahead. How many agencies should be responsible for collection of revenue in Nigeria? You have the Federal Internal Revenue Services. Federal Inland, sorry. Inland Revenue Services. So who should be responsible? Should it be night post? Should it be... I think there should be one body so that if we win, if we need figures, we go to this body and not go to night post today, go to NNPC. You know, we have that problem. One of the challenges is not remittance of the revenue that NNPC has made over the years. In actual sense, that NNPC has become a government within a government on its own, not accountable to the to the executive not accountable to the legislature. So when that post is now trying to create his own empire, when it comes to collection of revenue, collection of revenue should go straight to the, to the, to the body established by law to collect revenue. Okay. Night post is offering postal services. Night post is not, is not um, a revenue collection agency for government. And we should do things right and stop playing politics. Okay, so when you have multiple agencies, it becomes difficult for you to track the money, to track the resources coming into government. But when you have one agency responsible for receiving all receivable and all collectibles in terms of taxes, in terms of rate, in terms of income coming to government, we could go to their website and track the money coming into the nation. Mm. But we are different agencies that are collecting money. I don't know. I, I just, so, so you're saying you disagree uh, it's, it's, with, it's, it's, with Isa Pantami, who said that um, NIPOS historically has the duty of, you know, uh, processing stamps and all of that. And so all revenue, you know, from stamp duties should go to them. Do you, are you saying that? Also, he's explained that they're going to be um, splitting NIPOS into three companies so that one arm of NIPOS would, you know, specifically address the issue of revenue collection from stamp duties. Do you think that might work? Well, um, I, I don't know. Because um, the more things seem to be changing like that, the more, the more they remain the same. You see, we try to create different empires. We balkanize revenue collection. We balkanize political system, economic system. Let's have, if at the center, which is the federal government, which is the central government, you have multiple agencies doing multiple 
functions, functions that you could narrow down, that you could give to a single agency to do. That's duplication. That's waste stages within the system. So anything that will reduce waste stages, the cost of collecting revenue should not be more than the revenue you are going to collect. The principle of taxation talks about economy. One of the principles of taxation is about economy. Now, the economy talks about the cost of collecting the taxes should not be more than the taxes you are going to receive in the first instance. I just, I don't know. Hmm. I, I, don't, right. I, I, I don't know um, how. Because if we continue on this path, we will not get anywhere. Yeah, Judy Johnson, we would have to uh, end it here. Uh, thank you so much for you. your views on these uh, big stories across Nigeria today. It's, it's a pleasure to, to, speaking with to, you again. to be with you once again. Thank God it's Friday. Um, <laughs> we just go and look for one form of relaxation and take the problems of Nigeria off our neck <laughs> and off our, off our heart so that we don't have um, medical issues. But we'll, we hope and forget our prayer. We hope and we take necessary action because prayers do not solve Nigerian problems. It's just Absolutely taking decisive not. action to solve the problem. All right. All right. Thank you if, once again. If you don't take that action, the same thing we are saying today, with someone, some people said it 20 years ago, okay. and in 20 years' time, the same thing might be. <laughs> okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Johnson. Johnson. All right. Um, that was an extended uh, off the press segment. We're going on a short break. When we come back, we're moving to talking about uh, security once again. Sheikh Gumi is in the news this time. And now we're speaking about, um, you know, his offers to the federal government to help end insecurity. Yes. Is that really enough? And should the Nigerian government even, um, you know, put uh, the work of negotiating and discussing security issues in the hands of a Sheikh? Yes, and that will be after Today in History.